Hello, this is Lee Murphy, the artist behind the Art by Lee Murphy video channel, artbylemurphy.com, and the creator of the paintings and artwork you see on this video channel. This is a follow-up after, well, of course, this is another example of my realistic subjects used in an abstract manner. Um, the same kind of seashells in a previous video talking about getting your work into auction houses or not. Um, and it's an example of using the same chops, working in series. Um, this is a tw this is a uh, 12 inch by 30 inch painting, and an example of using the same seashells in a whole different manner. Um, and a lot of it had to do with the different light, different format, and the different way I was feeling at the time. So it makes it so so much different painting the same seashells. Anyhow. And I'm using, I'm using this one as it's probably the last painting I pulled out of the gallery that went out of business uh, last year. And an example, oh boy, this is a really tough one because I gripe a lot about galleries. I used to make the comment, though I still do occasionally, that the best way I can describe the relationship between a gallery and the artist is how pimps treat hookers. And I probably will get in a lot of trouble for that, but... I have found in my experience that the people who push back about stuff like that are generally because it, it hits them right where it's a little too accurate. But I think most of the average public does not understand a lot of what goes on when it comes to galleries and artists. It used to be when I was starting out that the commission that an artist would take, say if I were to sell this painting for $1,000, uh, the gallery would take 25 30 percent which in the you know in the average world of commission sales that's pretty high but but wait it gets better um some years ago a trend started i believe in new york city i could be wrong but that's where i, I first heard about it is galleries started taking 50 percent or more of an artist's sales so thousand dollar painting the 500 dollars would go to the gallery and that seems incredibly unjust, and in a lot of ways it is, given what the way it's spread around to the rest of the world. But um, doing a little bit more due diligence and using my critical thinking skills and trying to get off of my indignation uh, addiction with something like that is realizing that in a big city gallery, like I mentioned about all the unseen work that has to go into preparing and offering up art for sale at a big auction house. In some of the bigger galleries around there, that 50% commission seems a little bit more justified when you realize that there, in that world, there would be advertising campaigns and grooming the artist and preparing the work, talking it around, hiring uh, consultants and promoting it to art critics, finding museum shows for the artists. I mean, really, they were like kingmakers. So in that way, and once again, you would have an artist that would start out in this system and they would take a $500, $500 painting, and if the gallery was successful, you'd start seeing this, these paintings go for thirty, forty, fifty thousand 50000 or more. So in that light, I would figure, well, okay, I, I'd easily cough up 50% of sales because it's way more... Than I would have ever gotten otherwise. So, but the problem that I see is you would have galleries all over the world say, see that, wow, you know, that's standard practice to take 50% of an artist's sale price, but they would ignore how much work that the art gallery would have to do to justify taking that. So, uh, here's another uncomfortable. Uh, point that I make that a lot of the galleries you see around are really basically frame shops that sell art on the side. Um, they cater more to the neighborhood uh, artist who wants to make their career and quite often that's all we have. And it plays into the art, you know, a lot of artists need for validation. Uh, an artist that seem that still subscribe to the erroneous idea that they have to really give up a lot of what they would ordinarily make money off of in the way of paying dues. It's the myth of exposure. Um, basically bending over backwards and behaving like a doormat in order to uh, get your work hung in places that may not necessarily be good for you in the long run. Because my, um, this is another 
opportunity for another video. The myth of exposure is, is actually, I'm glad seeing it getting a lot more traction in the art circles because it is so very detrimental to artists, but there's still a lot of people who will feel for whatever reason they still have to do it. Basically give away their art for attention. Um, anyway, but back to the gallery thing. Um, a lot of artists, here's another segue that's going to have to go to another video too, is they cannot distinguish between someone who likes their art and who may or may or not be an honorable, likable, or otherwise good person to be around. I mean, anybody can say they love my artwork doesn't make them any different of a person. Uh, I cannot base a character judgment on just that one criteria. And I've been burned a lot of times for that reason, too. I've had my out artwork outright stolen, destroyed, and pretty much anything you can think of that's <laughs> detrimental to an art and an artwork an artist have, have, have ever has happened to me. So, once again, there's a ton of books out there. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there on this subject, so I don't have to get into too much detail, but I just can say that it's... Uh, pay attention to the red flags of abusive behavior. Um, people whose actions don't match up with their words get everything in writing, uh, and you can always say no. That's one problem I see with a lot of artists right now is they're terrified of saying no because they figure it's going to get them blacklisted and they'll never get another opportunity. And I think it's so in art, so in life, because that's not unique to the art world. Um, but basically, this is a business. Um, there is a lot more I could write about and talk about in that way, but back to the whole gallery thing, um, I do, in my opinion, think that they've pretty much gone their way of the dodo bird, even before the, the economy crashing and the COVID disaster and everything like that. It was galleries were way out of, going way out of business already before that, but I think it became unsustainable. There was not enough mutual benefit for art, artists and galleries when it came to taking such an in incredibly high percentage and just expecting that the sales would just float it without having to do the work for either the artist side or the gallery side. Um, it's a very complicated subject, but at least I was shy my little bit of, of knowledge on that where maybe with the way the world is sh shaken up today, we'll find something that works for the general public who, who may want to have more art in their lives, maybe pushing back against this mass consumer culture and filling their lives with things that took time and effort and energy and human spirit to make rather than something that came out of a machine or off a printing press. Um, I don't know. It's a very top, very nuanced subject, very complicated. I could probably talk on it for hours, but this is just a start. So thank you for listening, and I hope to make a few more videos on this subject.